We're now moving to um, the anniversary of the Bali bombing, and I welcome um, to the chamber His Excellency Dr. Siswo Pramo No, Senator Wong. Thank you, <clears throat> President. I seek leave to move government business notice of motion number five. Leave granted. Leave is granted. I thank the Senate. I also, on behalf of Senator, uh, Senator Birmingham, move that the Senate acknowledges 12 October 2022 marks 20 years since that terrible night in Kuta, Bali, when 202 innocent lives, including 88 Australians, were lost in the Bali bombings. And this date will be a difficult day for many Australians and Indonesians, as well as people around the world whose lives were changed forever that night and who continue to feel the impact of this senseless act. B recognises the brave efforts of first responders whose instinct to run towards danger saved the lives of many, and the professionalism of the Australian police, defence, diplomatic and medical staff who responded alongside their Indonesian counterparts with extraordinary courage and compassion in the aftermath of the attacks. C notes the friendship of our the strength of our friendship with Indonesia and the work we continue to do together, including to counter terrorism and violent extremism and calls on all Australians to keep those whose lives were lost, lost in our thoughts today and over the coming weeks as this sad anniversary is observed. Can I start by also acknowledging uh, the uh, in Ambassador for Indonesia, um, Paksiswa Pramana. You're very welcome in this chamber with your colleagues, Excellency, uh, as a, and we are very honoured to have you here today. On 12 October 2002, terrorists attacked Paddy's Pub and the Surrey Club in Kuta, Bali. They killed 202 innocent people, among them 88 Australians, 38 Indonesians and citizens of 20 other countries. Another 209 people were injured, many of them seriously, suffering severe burns and shrapnel injuries. Most of the victims who died were under 40. Nearly half were under 30. People of diverse faiths, ethnicities and nationalities from different walks of life, tourists and holiday makers, teammates from rugby league, AFL and other sporting clubs celebrating or commiserating the season past, groups of friends and colleagues, young couples and families on an evening out. The attack was shocking not just because of who it targeted, but because of where it happened. It happened on what the former governor of Bali, Bapa Mangu Pastika, called a small yet peaceful island. Bali has been treasured by generations of Australians. It has been a place that welcomed us, a place of culture and natural beauty, a place to rest and restore, a place of social ritual and of memory and meaning. And that night it became a site of pain and of tragedy. And 20 years on, the pain of that night is still with us and still with so many. We remember the victims, mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters, sons, daughters, friends, cruelly taken from us by an act of cowardice. And we know that the survivors, first responders and their families continue to live with the physical and mental scars. We continue to mourn the loss of the many victims and remember the heroes who risked themselves for others. As the then Governor Pastika said ten, nights, ten years ago, that night we saw that there are angels living around us. Survivors of the blast who helped each other to safety in the face of extreme danger. Extending care and compassion to perfect strangers. First responders, among them police, medical staff, embassy and consular officials and brave volunteers who ran towards the blast sites. Many worked throughout the night, searching for survivors and administering critical care. Doctors and nurses at hospitals in Bali, Darwin and Perth treated the injured and comforted them, comforted them through their pain. And they showed the best of us, Australians and Indonesians working together. We know the terrorists sought to divide our two countries and our peoples, to drive a stake into our multi-faith, multicultural democracies, and we know they failed. Instead, our two peoples are united. We're bound together in a shared purpose. The spirit of friendship between our people and the cooperation between our two countries has been strengthened. You see, out of that loss and tragedy came strength and courage, a defiance in the face of terror 
a refusal to be intimidated by those who seek to inflict harm on us, a resolve that we would work together and face future challenges side by side. And that sense of cooperation continues to this day across the full breadth of our relationship. Australia and Indonesia are connected in almost every sphere of life, culture, education, trade, commerce, and cooperation on many global challenges, including climate change. Together, we built the Jakarta Centre for Law Enforcement Cooperation, which has trained tens of thousands of police officers and strengthened our ties in so many areas. Its motto, learning and understanding through shared experience, epitomises the approach we take together as partners. And even when terror struck again, on the 1st of October 2005, killing 15 Indonesians and four Australians, we didn't lose hope. In fact, we redoubled our efforts. We looked for new ways to cooperate and solve our shared challenges. And programs like the Australia-Indonesia Muslim Exchange help us learn and understand each other through shared experience. Like the Australia-Indonesia Youth Exchange Program before it, which this year celebrates 40 years these cultural exchanges showcase the things that make us each unique. Communities in, in Australia and Indonesia responded to the attacks not by withdrawing in fear or by being divided, but by coming together in the pursuit of peace, forging a special connection that extends beyond governments and beyond politics. So 20 years on, Australians continue to visit Bali and the Balinese people welcome us again with generosity and with warmth. Before the pandemic, around a million Australians each year visited the beaches of Kuta or Seminyak, relaxed amongst the hills of Ubud, or enjoyed a moment of quiet reflection at Pura Lempuyang. And many of those who were there 20 years ago continue to visit, and some continue to live in Bali. On 12th October this year, we will mark the 20th anniversary at the National Memorial Service in the Great Hall here in Parliament House and at a service being held at the, at the Australian Consulate General in Bali. And these commemorations will offer an opportunity for all those affected to come together, to remember, to honour, to pay tribute and to remember the lives of those lost that night, to stand with the survivors, their relatives and their families and support them at this time. To assist, to acknowledge the bravery and selflessness of those who assisted in the response. And to mark the ongoing spirit of friendship and cooperation between the Australian and Indonesian people. I commend the motion to the Senate. Thank you, Senator Wong. Senator Cash. Uh, thank you, President. And I too rise to speak in support of the motion, noting the 20th anniversary of the Bali bombings. And uh, I thank the government for the opportunity to co-sponsor this motion. And I too, on behalf of the coalition, acknowledge the presence in the chamber today of His Excellency, the Indonesian Ambassador to Australia. Thank you so much for honouring us with your presence, sir. It was one of those moments in history when Australians remember exactly where they were the moments reports came home of the Bali bombings. At 11.05 p.m. on the 12th of October 2002, a suicide bomber detonated at Paddy's pub in Kuta, Bali, sending the injured and survivors out onto the street. Minutes later, another bomb detonated across the street at the Sari Club. The attacks brought immeasurable emotions of anger and grief. 202 people from more than 20 countries died. Over 100 people suffered irreparable injury from the blasts and fire that followed. Australia suffered the greatest toll, with the 88 Australians losing their lives. This year we mark 20 years since that night occurred. We remember those lost and we offer our deepest sympathies to the victims' families those who still carry the scars. We also acknowledge the selflessness of the first responders in the wake of the devastation. Today, here in this place, and on the 12th of October, 
we will remember those 88 Australians. The horror of that night is also a reminder of our resolute pledge against terrorism. Two days after the bombings, then Prime Minister John Howard said this. In many respects, the word terrorism is too antiseptic an expression to describe what happened. It is too technical and too formal. What happened was barbaric, brutal mass murder without justification. It is seen as that by the people of Australia and it is seen as that by the people of the world. It is a terrible reminder that terrorism can strike anyone, anywhere, at any time. Coming only a little more than 12 months after September 11, it is a sentiment that continues to serve as a reminder of events that changed the course of history. Sadly, the threat of terrorism persists. Australia has always been resolute in keeping Australians safe from terrorism. Successive governments have continued to work with international partners to prevent the devastation of terrorism and the ideologies that fuel them. And we recommit our bipartisan support to continue in the fight against terrorism in all of its forms. In the years following the Bali bombings, former Prime Minister Howard reflected, and he said this, those who were responsible for this terrible deed may have hoped a number of things. They may have hoped that they would have driven Indonesia and Australia further apart. Instead of that, they brought Indonesia and Australia closer together. Our two countries were thrust together beyond the shared connection of being Pacific neighbours, forging a united determination to eradicate the threat of violent extremism in the region and globally. In the aftermath of the bombings, Australia responded without hesitation. 61 injured victims were transferred to the Royal Darwin Hospital and burns units across the country within 62 hours of the blasts, with military and civilian flights aiding the evacuation. Our Australia Defence Force launched Operation Bali Assist, evacuating Australians and foreign nationals and providing medical assistance. The Australian Federal Police deployed a response team and assisted the Indonesian National Police with the immediate response and the investigation that followed. This cooperation would mean that some of those responsible for the horrific attacks would be prosecuted for their crimes. 14 Australian Commonwealth agencies, as well as state and territory agencies, would come together to help respond to the crisis. Non-government agencies, including St John's, the Australian Red Cross and Qantas, also provided their support. The Australian government honoured 199 individuals in 2003 for their selfless acts of bravery and dedicated service in the wake of the bombings. Two Australians were awarded the Cross of Valour, our highest civilian honour. Senior Constable Timothy Britton and Mr Richard Joyes, both hearing the bomb explosions, made their way to the Sari Club. And whilst unknown to each other at that time, together, they repeatedly went back into the club, risking their lives to rescue the injured. In the continuing grief that we hold, it is these examples that etch into history the strong and resilient Australian spirit. This anniversary will be difficult for many. Ceremonies will be held here in our nation's capital and across our great country. Many Australians, including the families of victims, survivors and first responders, have made the pilgrimage each year back to Bali for the anniversary, and each year they are welcomed by Indonesia, as they will be this year. An emblem adorning these services each year 
are the arrangements of wattle and frangipani flowers, a symbolic tribute uniting two countries. Australia and Indonesia would be again bound together, unfortunately, by grief following the second Bali bombings, not three years later, in 2005. Of the 20 casualties, four Australians lost their lives. The Bali Memorial Package, established in early 2003 and concluding in 2008, honoured those Australians who died. During its effective phase, the package strengthened health services in Bali, including provisions for Bali's main teaching hospital, the creation of the Australian Bali Memorial Eye Centre and multiple medical scholarship packages here in Australia. And as our relationship has continued to deepen with Indonesia, so has our cooperation since 2002 with a range of strategic, security, defence and economic partnerships and most recently in 2021 the renewal of our counter-terrorism memorandum of understanding. Our relationship with Indonesia is one of great importance. It defies those who sought to cause long-lasting chaos on that day and our ties remain strong. As a consequence of these attacks and others, which we see all too often around the world, we do live in a very different world today. We acknowledge and we give thanks to our police, our security agencies and our defence forces. They work every single day to keep Australians safe. Today, in the Senate, in recognition of the 20th anniversary, let us remember the 202 souls, including the 88 Australians, who lost their lives in the Bali bombings on the 12th of October 2002, and those who still bear the scars of that night. Let our thoughts be with them and their families, for they will never forget, and neither should we. Thank you, Senator Cash. Senator Waters. Thank you very much, President. And I firstly acknowledge uh, the Indonesian ambassador and his counterparts um, and welcome you to the chamber with our um, heartfelt condolences. I rise on behalf of the Australian Greens to support this motion, which commemorates and remembers the 202 victims, including the 88 Australians, of the bombing of Paddy's Bar and the Sari Club in Bali. And of course, at least 200 others who were also injured by the blasts and the fires that followed. Parents farewelled their children at the airport, waving them off for their first solo holiday in Bali and never saw them again. Partners, parents, siblings, friends, teammates were lost. The tragedy involved victims from more than 20 countries and many Balinese locals. We extend our heartfelt condolences to the families of those who were lost and to those who survived. We extend our thanks to those who assisted in the immediate aftermath and those who are still supporting uh, those affected. The immediate response in the hours and days after the bombing were a reminder of how we can come together. Doctors and nurses holidaying in Bali rushed to help victims. Local firefighters, first responders, people opened up their homed, homes and took the injured to find help. The tragedy of the Bali bombing was a reminder of how small and connected our world can be, and of the overwhelming humanity and community that binds us together, and the importance of global efforts to broker peace. Let us never forget this as we fight for a safer and better world for everyone. Thank you, Senator Waters. Senator McKenzie. Uh, thank you, Madam President. And on behalf of the Nationals, I join with my parliamentary colleagues in placing on the record our heartfelt condolences to the families, friends and loved ones of the victims on this, the 20th anniversary of the Bali bombings, and also welcome His Excellency to the chamber and share our heartfelt condolences, which I'm sure he will um, reiterate uh, back to Indonesia and the Balinese community more broadly on our behalf. Bali is indeed a beautiful island, paradise, that has for decades offered a spiritual retreat and escape, especially um, for Australians. Many Australians uh, often take their first overseas holiday to Bali, and it is a mecca for families, surfers, accessible to so many uh, across Australia. 
It's Saturday night on the 12th of October, a warm 24 degrees, and the city centre is bustling, some heading home after dinner and others heading out to start their night party. Then at 11.05 p.m., a suicide bomber detonated inside Paddy's pub in Cooter. Minutes later, another bomb detonated across the street at the Sari Club. Those explosions that night killed 202 people from 20 countries. Australia suffered the largest loss, with 88 fatalities and hundreds more left wounded. We can only imagine the utter distress of losing a loved one under such horrific circumstances. And we can only imagine the ongoing distress experienced by those injured and those who witnessed the carnage and human suffering. This cowardly and despicable bombing has tragically affected families not only in Australia but also in Bali. This was an attack on both Australi Australians and Balinese, an attack on the Australian way of life and the Balinese way of life. In the wake of the attacks, the Australian Defence Force immediately mobilised, launching Operation Bali Assist just 17 hours after the blast. The first RAF RAAF plane arrived to evacuate injured Australians in the largest aeromedical evacuation since the Vietnam War. At least 66 badly injured people were flown to Darwin for treatment. The military then assisted in secondary transfers of people from Darwin to medical centres around the country. Hours after the attacks, the Australian Federal Police also organised a team to go to Bali. It included disaster victim identification staff, forensic investigators, intelligence officers, administrators, security staff, IT and comms staff to assist the Indonesian National Police investigation. Over 10 days, AFP members also interviewed 7,000 Australians about their experiences as they returned to Australia after the attacks. The AFP was instrumental in identifying and returning victims to their families and provided extensive investigative support that led to the capture of the perpetrators. Out of the destruction of the bombings came many stories of ordinary people making extraordinary efforts to help those affected. People who were injured in the blasts stayed to assist others, and locals and foreigners went to the site to help. Tourists with medical skills worked with overwhelmed Indonesian medical staff at the bomb sites and local hospitals. Nearly 200 Australians received formal recognition for their bravery and the assistance they provided both immediately and in the following months. On the 10th anniversary of the attacks, the then former Labor Minister and uh, leader, I think, of the government in this place at that time, uh, Senator Chris Evans, echoed the sentiment of many when he said, and I quote, they took many lives, but they failed in their mission. October 12, 2002 was also a day of great heroism, of selfless acts of courage, of remarkable emergency response. What was a terrible day of shared grief for Indonesia and Australia became a day of great shared resolve. Joe Frost spoke at Newcastle Sacred Heart Cathedral in a special service to acknowledge the victims of the Bali bombings and encapsulated what many Australians were feeling when he said, that bomb hit us that night and it has hit all of our community. I think those words ring true because irrespective of where we live in Australia, whether we visit Bali, whether we know anybody directly associated with the bombings as victims or as relatives, we can empathise with the ongoing hardship and distress they still experience. In these continuing uncertain times, we must be vigilant in being even more aware of our surroundings and ensure that we take every necessary measure to fight against such acts of terrorism, terrorism that aim to bring down our very way of life. It is regrettable, yet a reality, that we are in the midst uh, of a war that has no boundaries, whose victims are random and the perpetrators of which are devoid of the basic decency found in most human beings. Sadly, the word Bali became synonymous uh, with this bloodshed, this tiny idyllic paradise was drawn into the maelstrom of intolerance, ignorance and hate. The irony is that Bali is a beautiful place uh, that sadly was associated with this terror. I recall watching television footage of people at the airport and one man who was interviewed said, of course I'm going to Bali. If I don't go, they will have won. Of course, this is what we must all do and we have done. Our love for the Balinese people, the country's landscape, the surf, the bintang uh, has not waned 
and Bali today is one of our favoured holiday destinations. Uh, it is also a strong partnership uh, of, between the federal government of Australia uh, and the Indonesian government of strategic, economic and people-to-people -people relationships being so important. I reiterate our condolence to the victims, their families and those who still live with what they experienced on that fateful October night. Our thoughts and our prayers in the National Party are with them during these most difficult times, and we support the motion. Thank you, Thank you uh, Senator Waters. And uh, I'm going to move the motion as um, ask that the motion be agreed to as moved by Senator Wong. And I thank His Excellency the Ambassador for coming to share with us today. Um, and we'll just stand for a moment silence. Senators. I'll take that as moving the motion. Thank you.